Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Pasha Tatashin. I work in the memory management uh, team uh, at Google. And um, I'd like to talk about uh, several um, problems that we encountered uh, in the last several months uh, related to uh, IOMMU page tables. Uh, and um, propose some solutions to those problems uh, and also uh, have a discussion about uh, uh, how to ad address some of them. So um, the, first, uh, the first few slides are going to be about observability and accounting. Uh, and uh, then we will talk about uh, stability and debuggability, basically ways we can uh, uh, quickly debug problems that are related to the IOMMU page tables. Okay, so uh, growing IOMMU page tables. So uh, at Google, we are trying to um, categorize uh, the kernel memory overhead. So we try to find out uh, where uh, like we, we, we are trying to reduce the size of the hypervisor uh, as I guess everyone else in the industry. And um, uh, we are trying to explain uh, how the uh, uncategorized uh, memory, uh, kernel memory is actually used. Uh, also, uh, we had some problems where we started uh, seeing some ooms and we knew, uh, we knew that the problems were coming from uh, our hypervisor being uh, larger than expected. So it took us some time to actually find out, like to explain what was happening. And uh, the problem was that our IOMMU page tables were much bigger than we were expecting. In fact, they were actually uh, many, gig uh, many gigabytes in size. Uh, and. Uh, when you're trying to reduce the hypervisor to be just a few gigabytes, that is, a, of course, uh, not um, acceptable. Uh, the machine where we saw that was uh, AMD, and uh, uh, I wrote a small program that uh, re reproduces it by basically doing DMA maps, DMA and maps and verifying that and cycling through the VA space. So basically, uh, we uh, unmap un pages, the page table entries, uh, the page uh, table levels do not have any uh, valid entries, uh, but we never free them. And uh, I thought that it probably just uh, AMD, implement, like AMD driver implementation because we never saw this problem on uh, our Intel and actually on our ARM machines as well. Um, but then I ran this program, it's called uh, IOVA Stress, and uh, th there is a link to GitHub to, uh, to this program. Um, on all three machines, AMD, Intel, and ARM, and behavior was exactly the same. So we basically, as we cycled through the VA space, uh, the amount of free memory is uh, reducing on all, all machines. Um, and you can see it's reducing uh, about the same size. Because, uh, again, because there is no observability, we, we don't have uh, a way to look at this, to look directly at uh, the size of IOMMU page tables. Uh, the, the, the way uh, I was looking at, uh, at the overhead was just by looking at the amount of, like amount of the free memory. And uh, as you can see, it, it went down to, on all three architectures. So um, the, the reason why we didn't see that on Intel and ARM was basically by accident because the hypervisor slot was larger on those machines compared to on AMD. Now, uh, the question is, uh, why would we even cycle through the VA space? Uh, th that's the uh, implementation detail of the uh, of our user land program that's doing that. But um, I, I think that overall it, it is a, a, a good idea not to reuse the VAs for uh, the security reasons. Um, uh, I mean, there is a reason why we have uh, address space randomization uh, and uh, 
if we obviously use the same VA, why would we even use IOMMU? We could just use direct, uh, like one-to-one -one mapping. So my, my, point, my, my point is that we probably should have an ability to actually uh, use different VAs every time without tearing down the domains. Uh, so, the, the proposal, uh, so, so, so as a quick fix, we have uh, changed the program not to cycle through the VAs, uh, and uh, we, we also uh, were thinking to have um, a quick fix in our kernel where we would just free the page table levels on unmaps, but that is uh, inefficient because you would have to check uh, if page table is all zeros at the time of unmap. So the, a better way would be just to use uh, ref count to have the number of entries at a particular page table level. And once it uh, reaches one, so it's just uh, allocated by IOMMU. At that point, we probably want to add it to a free list and uh, free it sometime later asynchronously. Uh, yes, so and please interrupt me at any time, and let's. Uh, I, I want to have a discussion. So. Sure. So there's a conversation on the mailing list right now about the Panfrost DRM driver. Who, anyway, they want something kind of similar, and I, I, I actually sketched out on the list how to do this and mm -hmm. uh, a reasonable API that would fit into like VF, excuse me, VFIO and IOMUFD that would fix your situation. So it's mostly just waiting for someone to actually want to do it. But there's several now, now several reasons why we'd want to do it. Like this, this has been a known problem for a while. Okay. So uh, are they fixing it for all IOMM implementations? So, or is, ah. or is it just <laughs> we, need to, uh, we need to do it separately for the, specifically for IOMMU page tables, uh, and that is separate from, uh, from that discussion? So this is one of like my pet peeves about the IO page table sort of mini framework we have. It's not... It goes as far as letting you share some of the code between a, a DRM driver and um, and the IOMMU driver, but it doesn't let you share algorithms between IOMMU drivers and between different IO page table implementations like you can in the MM. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it would be very valuable if somebody Ooh. went and restructured that so that we were sharing algorithms and the IO page table was just providing like the Radix tree, you know bit manipulations and things like MM does. And then you could have a generic implementation. Yes, uh, so that, that's actually one of my proposals is actually to move all the page allocator, allocation functions into a separate file that is going to be used by all uh, IOMMU architectures. And then in that file also manage the freeing of the pages, but uh, we probably need to have uh, a thread that uh, does that asynchronously because I don't think that uh, we want to do it synchronously. Honestly, unmap is already so slow and map is already so slow. You're you're chasing the wrong thing if you're worrying about threads at that point. Um, um, there's there's way lower fruits to get to before you get to worrying about threads. I, I mean, well, I mean, it, it's slow today. Maybe will be faster tomorrow. Uh, do you want to make it slower? Because when I'm just saying like. So once you fix the IO page table stuff, so that it's kind of using generic algorithms, then one of the first things you'd want to do is fix unmap so it wasn't so horribly broken for what IO MMUFD wants to do so that you could make it actually run fast. And yeah. then after you do all of that, then maybe you'd want to think about, um, you know, is is, re is freeing a page back to the page allocator my hotspot? Like, mm -hmm. Probably not. Um, yeah, so um, another concern that I have about uh, like freeing uh, page table levels is that uh, there are some libraries that actually uh, try to reuse uh, VAs. So if we do uh, freeing on every single unmap, uh, we will slow down those libraries. So perhaps we should uh, uh, start freeing uh, from the back of the queue. So uh, n not immediately. And, and and that's why the reason why I was thinking to have like this uh, free list and do it from like uh, it really depends how expensive it is to allocate and free from the page allocator and, and again yes you know map and the unmap are already very very slow there's so much going on there um, true yeah uh, but but that's just another thing to consider. Uh, 
how do the user space page tables handle this? Surely you have the same problem. So uh, I haven't looked into the way uh, user um, page tables handle that, but I would assume you use GraphCounts for that. And um, if anyone here has the answer. So you're asking like, what does the MM do? Um, I think if I remember properly, the way MM works is, is, is kind of similar and they have a similar problem. It zaps basically all the PTE levels under a VMA, which is exactly what IOMMU, or at least the good IOMMU drivers do. So his issue is specifically because he's using two meg, basically two meg VMAs. And I think people have talked about like cleaning up PMD levels and other levels, but I, I don't know. I remember seeing it at LSF once. I don't think it's gone very far. It's not only about PMD, right? I mean, if you unmap 4K and it's the last 4K on the bottom level, you want to remove that level and the level above. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think the MM does that optimization unless your VMA spans it already. Uh, right, but uh, but here, like, if we know that it is the last pay, uh, page because of the ref count, we can just add it to a oh, yeah. free list, and then once the free list becomes large enough, we can start uh, freeing it at some point, uh, sometime later. So the reason why the code is how it is is that um, page table updates are encouraged to be lockless in the IOMU code because. Um, otherwise, it would be a big bottleneck for, for massively parallel I.O. operations which use DMA API. Mm -hmm. There was lots of work uh, going into the IOVA allocator with, with per CPU magazines and everything to make this actually parallel and per CPU. And we don't want have, we, we don't want to have another bottleneck in the in the page table code that if we allow page table page freeing would need locks. So we need some fine grained blocking to to actually um, Make it still scale, right, across multiple CPUs. Even if it's slow on a on a on a on a, on a single CPU, it it needs to it needs to scale with the number of CPUs. Yes. And and the ref count is not the whole solution because even if, even if the ref count is zero zero, you don't know when whether another CPU comes around and is about to update it again. So you can you can't atomically check ref count and unmap the page from the page table. No, right. I I don't plan uh, unmapping it immediately again th th that's the reason why i'm suggesting to put it on a uh, on a free list but keep it in a page table until we actually uh, do the hard job of actually freeing that page sometime later so the proposal in the mailing list addresses what george was talking about like we don't want to disturb the dma api and we want to keep the kind of nice lockless behavior that it has so what I suggested is that you could manipulate the ref count like on request. Like you could reserve IOVA in advance, and that would pre-populate the Radix tree and also depopulate the Radix tree based on ref count. So you kind of you would provide an API that where you could either be like DMA API where you're lockless and you're kind of weak, mm -hmm. or you could be like the FIO where you want to be strong and you want to have ref counts. And we could put them both into the same algorithms and mm -hmm. not hurt DMA API. Like that. Yeah, that, that, that is the goal. I, I, I certainly uh, want to keep those uh, page tables lockless. Like, so do, doing only the atomic operations and uh, so n not to, uh, to reduce the scalability in any way. Well, I don't see a way to keep it lockless when you, un when you are starting to unmap page table pages. I I'm not sure that's whether I'll use the solution. Probably some fine grained locking, like what the what what the core MM code does, doing a doing a PMD level lock or something. That would probably solve solve the problem. Then you can free the the leaf pages, um, which already should give you a much much benefit or should solve this problem to I think ninety percent or so. Mm -hmm. RCU works fine. We do do it in the MM in a couple of places. The the way you do the RCU, yeah, you 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 free the page, you free the Radix tree page under RCU or with an RCU free, so it's deferred. If you reach the page when you're walking and you try and get a ref count and it's zero, then you know that some other thread is freeing it, so you just don't touch it, and you're doing that under RCU, so the, that ref count check is safe, and then you do a little you basically store the new page. So everybody has to um, be a little careful when they're updating the, the pointer to that level. Uh, it, that needs another atomic, I think, but it, it works out and it's a slow path anyway. Uh, 
Okay, so <laughs> another thing that I wanted to, um, to, to consider is, uh, do we want to have any kind of um, control from the user land in terms of the max, like the maximum size of the of this uh, free page table levels, or do you want to just have it automatic? I, I see one opinion to the, that uh, everything should be automatic. <laughs> um, okay, so but um, if it's automatic, then um, we'll be just uh, set it to some default value, like a couple megabytes in size overhead or what what is it going to be i think the point that was made is just like as soon as you free it you free it it's on on the rest your free list it's going to get free you don't have it anymore so you don't have like a free list that you want to have it's just it's no longer yours you do else you free mm -hmm. of the page so the page is already free so you don't have a list yeah, yeah so if you, but you but but that would mean that we do it uh, in line right uh, during yeah. the anime map yeah so you think that we shouldn't uh, do any kind of okay i mean th that would increase the time to, to do the end map so but uh... no 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 if you do rc3 it won't increase the time to do the end map that's that's the idea well i mean Maybe not uh, in terms of locking it won't increase, but in terms of uh, just a, 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 a extra stuff doing. But adding a, adding pages to free list is actually also some extra cost. Yes, okay. So you you, you think you think you're just putting it back to the body allocator and just right on it. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I, I could try that to do some measurements to see if how it impacts the performance. So I was just curious. Uh, so I've worked on MMUs in the past, a long time ago. So I'm a little bit out of date. You guys haven't talked about at all about the TLB that's in typically in an IMU to cache the translations that is looked up for the DMA that's happening. Mm -hmm. Have you guys talked? So the TLB shoot down was actually the most expensive part of an unmap, and that's yes. why we would coalesce them into batches, and that's why the unmap was so expensive. Has that changed, or is there something else? You, you're worried about the wrong thing. The MM doesn't do that kind of stuff. It goes back to the buddy allocator. The buddy allocator is pretty fast. The big overheads are the TLB shoot downs and all the other stuff, like the pinning pages, the unpinning pages. There's so much junk in that path that we can optimize before the allocator is going to be the critical. That, that, that is exactly why I was thinking to do that uh, in, a, in a batch. So we do the uh, one flushing and then uh, freeze several yep. pages at a time yep. instead yep. of doing it every single on map. We that, have that, infrastructure that can do that. We just, we're just not Yes, we do have infrastructure to do that. That, that. that is exactly that. That's why I was saying that do we really want to do on every single uh, GMAN map to free a, a page table level once it's become free? And that is that becomes expensive, isn't it? I would say it should go in the gather like an MM does, and it should be freed when the gather is flushed, like MM does. So, from your perspective, from like a VFIO user, when you do unmap, it gets freed. But internally to the kernel, we'd want to batch the entire VA range that you're trying to free and, and optimize like MM does. Like it's not any different than MM. Oh, okay. So just basically piggyback, piggyback to the flashing uh, function. Okay. Yeah, that would work. So basically. Uh, I guess when we uh, when we flush, uh, walk to the page table, look where we have ref counts one, and then just uh, free those as well. Yeah, th that would work. It, there are actually two parts of this, right? There's a part where we're keeping track of the page we need to free, and the part where we do actually the invalidations. And the invalidation can be pa can be batch with ranges, right? You don't normally have to do invalidation on every single page individually, right? So I think in the invalidation part, I think we, we can kind of figure out how to do it efficiently. But I think like the conversion going back, it was actually like, how do we track those pages, right? In the in the, in the PD, PMD and, and, and the, the last level before we can figure out like, do we need to call the free all those pages? I mean, invalidation is, is a separate things here. So that depends on who you're talking to. So if you talk to the security teams, they want invalidation the moment it becomes free. 
They do not want them batched. Before invalidate invalidate them free. Free. Yes. yes. Uh, but I mean, the driver says, I'm done with this page, and now I want to invalidate it, and it becomes free then. Yes, correct. Sorry about that. It's worse than that. Like some of the some of the hardware has caching of Radix tree levels, so you have to invalidate the hardware before you go and free the page back to the buddy allocator. Yes. Otherwise, the hardware, like the, the IMMU hardware itself, is going to start doing use after freeze, which you don't want. Uh, it is in the hard. No, Yes, and actually there are different modes, right? With the DMA, you, you can you can do lazy flush, you can do non lazy flush. If you care about security, then you do non lazy flush. But in this case, I think security they already taken care of by having the IOVA spread it out so that you not you will not be reusing IOVA. That's why we run into this problem because the IOVA space is getting so huge. And then at this point, we, we need to figure out okay, if that's the use case, how do we do the free, right? Yeah. Uh, so another question is, uh, Jason, maybe you can answer too, is the, um, is anybody still measuring utilization of IOTOB? Oh, how efficient is the IOTOB? Uh, is, is the caching effective or not? Because one of the suggestions here was um, to have a generic page allocator for the IOVAs. And very often the IOTOB policy is what dictates how you allocate the page address space because then you don't have IOTOB collisions between DMA streams on different physical pages and such, right? There can be utiliza utilization issues around that. In the same way that processors that have virtually tagged caches also have like page coloring and other schemes to avoid uh, cache collisions. I think we can determine that by using like, the, like IO maybe has performance counter, right? To count how many times the TLB is actually hit or miss. So I think before we can answer that, we need to determine that first and then see if that's really the problem. Um, I mean, I, I don't have data to share, but I know, you know, certainly as a device manufacturer, we look at IOTLB efficiency quite seriously and we consider, you know, the size of the IOTLB relative to what kind of workloads we're running to run. And we know that ITLB misses are incredibly expensive and very harmful to device performance. Um, as for like coloring and things, I think at least the modern enterprise IOMUs have TLBs that are fully efficient like the CPUs. So they don't have bias. I mean, I'm sure they have their multi-way and they have collisions and things, but they don't have, we don't seem to take care of that in the software at all. We just don't do anything. Interesting point. As far as I know, all the big ARM, the, you know, the two x86 and ARM, I don't think they have, but that's a micro, micro architectural detail, I don't know. All I know is that we have no software that tries to address that. Okay, um, thank you for the discussion. Uh, I'll uh, take a look at the page, uh, at, the, uh, at the discussion that you mentioned. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the, the first attempt is going to be to, uh, to do the freeing at the time of uh, flushing. That's basically it. So sounds like the time when we, th that is already expensive and uh, l l let's do everything at, this, at the same time. Okay. Okay, so for the observability, uh, we have uh, uh, ProcMem Info, uh, where we have a lot of uh, uh, statistics for, for the pages that are managed by body allocator. Uh, and we have page tables and we have secondary page tables, but we don't have uh, IOMMU page tables. So I'm proposing to add another field, IO page tables. Okay. So this is this is just for the whole system, right? IO this is for the whole system, yes. It, it, I think it might be more useful to have it per BFIO container or something like that. So especially if you're in a VM, if you've got yeah, VMs, you can know which one is consuming your IO page. Uh, so, so, sounds good. So we, we we probably want to do that as well. So we, uh, this is more for observability, like in general, so uh, users can quickly see where the memory is used in the system. Yeah. But but unless you know where it's coming from, right? Which VFI container? What I, I I agree. I, I I like this proposal. I. But it's not only uh, VFI related. I think the problem is mostly seen 
Well, the problem we are trying to solve is mostly seen in DMA API domains, right? It's not in VFIO domains. Um, because VFIO domains are set up with the, with the GPA to SPA mappings, and there are not many unused page table pages, right? I think the problem mostly occurs in, in DMA API mm -hmm. page tables. So and these are not covered so, by a VFIO container. <clears throat> so, so we have it per device or per uh, IMU group or something? Yeah. IMU group device over there. Um, okay. John wants it. Yeah. But that, that would also mean that we would have a different counter. So, uh, and, and I will talk a little more about observability uh, later, and I will explain why we still want to have uh, this counter in addition to what you are proposing. Okay. So for the counter, please just reuse secondary page tables. The entire reason it's called secondary page tables and not KVM page tables and not vert page tables is for the IOMU to piggyback that. So just put your accounting in there. Uh, <laughs> but what if you want to have them separate to see the problems like this? This, this comes but... back to James' point, though, where if you want to drill down into that level of detail, you have to have it tied to something that's not system scoped. These are useful. So KVM does do all of its accounting and tracking, and we have per page size counters for how many pages each VM is having. Mm -hmm. A bunch of junk around that. The system-wide stuff is still useful because it allows you to detect things that like, oh, we've gone off the rails and we've got a systemic problem. So but that so is super coarse-grained. If you want the gory details of what a specific VM or IMU group is doing, then yeah, you have to have much more fine-grained specific counters. Mm -hmm. But at the system level, course grain sure. is good enough. Uh, fair enough. So uh, I'll modify Brockman Minford to report the sum of uh, for, for the EBTs and the IMU page tables. Uh, because we will still uh, track them separately within the system. It doesn't make sense to have a, like a node state page uh, increment the EBT counter for the IMU page tables in the system, right? I didn't quite follow that. So, uh, actually, now thinking about this, uh, so, so we have uh, this um, uh, zone counters, and uh, f that zone counter is incremented, it's incremented for the EBT page tables uh, in the KVM. Uh, so, what I'm saying is so the secondary page tables, which is your coarse grain system scope thing, mm -hmm. use that for all secondary page tables. So anything that's not the primary MU. Okay. Covered into secondary page tables, which is basically KVM and IOMMU at this point. Uh, uh, maybe some GPUs if they wanted to throw something in there, but that seems unlikely. And when you go below that, then it becomes subsystem specific how you're servicing stats and accounting to user space. Like in KVM, it's per VM. Mm -hmm. And you can also surface those up through KVM as a whole, but mostly what you're looking at is for this VM, what are my stats? And there, what you care about is not necessarily just how many page tables have I created, you're caring about how many page tables at what level have I created? Because mm -hmm. if you have you know, 10,000 page tables, that may not be interesting. If you have 90% that are 4K, that mm -hmm. can be very interesting relative to, oh, this VM over here has far better performance because I've got one gig across the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll add the statistics into the secondary page tables. Um, and uh, I will look into how to uh, report uh, per IMMU the main statistics? Um, I would encourage you, I actually welcome adding similar, like KVM has per KVM counters, add per IOMMU FD, FD counters someplace as well. And that will do, you could do a lot of great stuff with that. Mm -hmm. I really like, I think that's a really great project for someone. Oh, okay. Um, good, good suggestion. Thank you. And I don't know how many counters you want to add into the IOMFD and if you want to like consider those ABI, but other things that from a KVM perspective that we found useful are how many entries you've zapped. So even if you're just looking at how many um, page tables you've created, if that stays relatively steady state, but then you have something that's just goofy and you're constantly zapping and recreating, that can also cause performance blips. And if you are just tracking how many you have, but not mm -hmm. how many you have churned through, uh, mm -hmm. it's harder to see. So that's another one that might be useful. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the st uh, statistics that you provide. So, 
that, that KVM provides. Oh. What, in the chat? I cannot scroll here for some reasons. It's it's not working. I've been trying to scroll. It does does not. Uh, the question in the chat. Okay. Can, uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know if they're referring to the latest discussion isn't the reason for IMMU besides catching bad software security yeah, no, I, that, yeah, that, that, well, I wouldn't say they're stale, I don't know, but I think it's we missed them. So, yeah. just to sort of preempt your slide, I, I think I already got this merged like two kernel cycles ago, so it's already done. So, so IMMU, like now all page uh, Alex actually charged for IOMMUFD, yeah. And for MMIMMD. Maybe VFIO. I don't remember if I did VFIO. I, I, I think the kernel, like a week ago, it's not. It's definitely not the count. At least a week, as a week ago. We definitely did a lot of VFIO too. I don't know if we did every, like the DMA tracking, the objects we have in, via, in type 1. Uh, the question was, did we put it in IMMU map? Um, I don't think so because the only allocation we have in type one there is that uh, DMA, VFIO DMA tree. I don't think we're counting that one yet. So, so I, I tested uh, earlier today, uh, and uh, I, um, I think uh, I think my uh, kernel like most a week ago, maybe less than that. And uh, yeah, so counting is still not there, at least for for what I'm, I'm proposing. Yeah, to to, to add accounting is it is in, indeed, um, but um, we also want to add this uh, page state fu function that actually increments increments. If you if you want to have uh, IUMMU page tables uh, accounted separately, right? As and and uh, and I think it makes sense to have like a separate accounting. Specifically for like we have CPU accounting, we have like it makes sense to have a separate IMMU page table account. I I I I I don't really want to reuse like some weird MM thing because I want to keep the LRU available for some of the other stuff we talked about at the beginning of the talk in the struct page, right? Um, I think it would be great if C group had a way to partition, you know, to bucket the source of the allocator for debugging. <laughs> It's a more generic feature. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know that we should be doing something specific to IOMMU here, is what I'm saying. Like, okay. Like C group, if you want to break down the C group where it's going, then that's a C group question. In okay. My in that case, it, it is indeed going to be very simple uh, change, just uh, add kernel accounting and uh, be done with that, not adding the IOMMU specific uh, controls and reporting. I like it. It actually makes things easier for me. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so so another problem that uh, we've had uh, in in the last several months and, uh, is that uh, we, we've seen some memory corruptions. They're not necessarily are you maybe page table related, but um, the thing is that. Um, over time, our systems uh, became more uh, complex. Now, a page can be mapped uh, in user page table and kernel direct map. Uh, it can be mapped uh, in IMMU page table. It can be mapped in, in the extended page table. So there are many uh, different page tables. And when we find the memory corruption, and we usually find memory corruptions by um, accident, for example, like uh, ext4 file system can find it through journaling or 
during the live migration we can find when we check something uh, before and after live migration. Uh, we know the physical address of the page that um, uh, was corrupted, but uh, we uh, don't um, don't have a, like a, a quick way to look where that page is mapped. So uh, in the system. So we could, of course, ignore uh, the kernel mappings, direct map, because like everything is mapped there. But uh, it would be interesting to see if that page, like the one that was uh, that is corrupted, if it was mapped in any of the IOMM page tables, so any of the extended page tables, or, or something like that. And uh, for user page tables, we have page map. We can just uh, go through them. But uh, we don't have anything like that for the other page tables. Do we want to have something like that? If we, and that should be, if we do, it should be. Uh, uh, fast, it shouldn't uh, like it should provide um, uh, an access uh, so that uh, if we have uh, an error that this page is not actually mapped at the time, but it reports that it's mapped, uh, it's okay. We can uh, tolerate that kind of errors. But the, the point is that it sh uh, it, sh it should be fast, lockless, and uh, just uh, something that um, where, where we can quickly check uh, where where a physical page is mapped. Uh, so for, for several reasons, uh, there, there is a window, the page can be, can get unmapped, uh, and we don't want to uh, slow down other uh, processes that uh, actually using those page tables uh, when we do the lookup. So it's a memory corruption, for example, in a virtual machine, right? The virtual, we kill the virtual machine, but we don't, we don't want to kill the whole host. We want to continue running. But we want to look at uh, where that page was mapped at the time okay. of the memory corruption. So my original question was, why does this need to be fast? And I'm just thinking, you had a memory corruption event. You should take all the time in the world you need to figure out what happened there. I, I, don't, I don't think it needs to be fast. That's not a fast path because it's not a regular thing that happens. It should not be a regular thing that happens. If it is, there's something else wrong with the hardware. Another comment. Instead of fast, do you mean it should not disturb other things going on in the system? Because those are, I, I agree, like you don't need the lookup to be fast. And unless you have reverse maps, the lookup is not going to be fast because if you've got a VM with a terabyte of memory, have fun walking all the page tables and <laughs> dump yes. a terabyte of memory. It's not going to be fast, but you don't want to disturb other systems. So I don't, it, it's not clear what the requirement actually is. The requirement is not to disturb the other system. So it should be lockless. And since it's lockless, it's, I mean, it, does the it's lock, but yeah. it doesn't have to be lockless though. I mean, it is like from a, if your lock is scoped to the VM that just died, who cares? But you're not looking inside the VM, you're looking like, so the page was corrupted. Someone else corrupted it. It's, it's mapped somewhere right. else. We want oh, to... Yeah, no, I got it. All I'm asserting is that when you're saying it has to be fast and lockless, you are putting a line that you don't actually have to meet. You don't want to take locks that may be contended by something other than the, the process that you were trying to debug. But, but that it's is totally right. fine to take locks that nothing else in the system uh, should hold. So I sure, I, I, I can, confusing. yes. If, uh, if that line is confusing, I can rewrite it to explain it better. Uh, th that, uh, that makes sense. Uh, um, Pasha, but, but you've got five minutes just to say if there is anything you want to go through, just keep it in mind. Uh, I think there's just one more topic. So I don't know if you're aware, but Intel driver has a debugger fest that does exactly this. I think it would be a great idea to make a general, like like my previous comment about making the I.O. page table stuff more uniform. It'd be great if we had a debug effect uh, that worked everywhere consistently. Th th this Intel driver actually uh, has like a page map like uh, interface. So, I mean, because yeah, I, I, don't don't think think it it, I don't think it actually dumps the, the entries. It's, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same, but it gives you the same data. You can, yeah, you can extend uh, uh, Intel's DebugFS interface to show that. Th that's one way to do that. But do we want to do that uh, there or do we want to have it somewhere else? Like, uh, I mean, every single process uh, has a page map. Do we want to have that for every uh, VFIO or something? Uh, there was a previous attempt on SMMU v3 driver as well to add the DebugFS support. So. <clears throat> that was very specific within the driver and uh, 
the comment was uh, to move it to IO page table. Yeah, so, and uh, I think that we were trying to add some support for stream table printing and all those stuff as well, like uh, dumping all the information. So. And, and uh, to uh, uh, like uh, extend to that, do you want to have uh, a similar interface for extended page tables as well? To be able to, uh, so page map basically for extended page tables. I just want to point out like where is the security issue with that also. So, you know, keep in mind that from a security point of view, it needs to be a lock. Uh, yes, I understand. When you say extended page tables, are you referring to, is it mapped in KVM's page tables? Yes. So I would say don't bother because the way KVM works, the page tables are ephemeral and they can may or may not point at uh, guest memory at any given time. User space has mem slots that has explicitly told what virtual addresses have been mapped into the guest or are available to the guests. So you can just use the proc -pid page map to cross-reference that. Trying to dump it from KVM is probably going to be uh, a bit pointless. Okay. All the information you need to get what KVM may have mapped is available already to user space. Uh, Adding more into KVM is just- uh, unle Unless there is a bug. Uh, and uh, th there is a bug. We know there is a bug because there is a memory corruption. And uh, if the two mappings are, maps are not synchronized correctly, then uh, th that's not true. The, the problem you have with KVM, though, is that you don't have one EPT. Yes. You have, for the life of a VM, you theoretically have infinite number of, e, of EPT routes that you could have used. So mm -hmm. I, I just don't know that it gains you much. I'm not necessarily against it, but I just don't know that it gains you much relative to what you have today. Like, I think to get something like that landed upstream, especially, you would want to, I would want to see some concrete use case you ran across where you you found memory corruption that you couldn't resolve and the only way you could resolve it by was knowing exactly which mappings at that snapshot in time were in kvm and you couldn't get that with a crash dump uh okay so it's only two minutes left uh there, there is uh, one more thought uh for uh enhancing the uh stability and debuggability of the it's more actually about uh, uh, stability. So we have this uh, page table check uh, functionality. Every time we insert a, uh, a PT entry into user page table, we check that that uh, PT entry is not uh, at, the at the same time, for example, uh, mapped as anonymous and file or as um, anonymous uh, read-write, but uh, to several processes and so on. So it it's a simple uh, rule. Uh, like table of rules, and uh, I copy pasted this um, uh, these rules. And the question is, uh, can we extend that to other page tables, to so the secondary page tables? Uh, and if so, what kind of rules could we add there? Uh, quickly, we already have this in KVM. We have a very variety of rules: the legal transitions, the combination of bits, um, variety of things. Some are warn-ons, a couple are bugs. Some are protected by uh, expert-only K config that only KVM developers are expected to turn on. So we have a variety. Of so so, so but when you insert a page uh, into the uh, so, so the way uh, uh, page table check works, it works outside of the regular um, uh, MM. So it's not. It tries not to rely on uh, the memory management data structure. Instead, it has its own uh, extend, uh, extended uh, page table um, uh, field where we have where we count how many times this page is mapped as uh, uh, named, how many times it, it's mapped as anonymous. So the question is, um, when we map into extended page table, we know that this like if that page is mapped as anonymous into the user process it shouldn't be mapped uh, anywhere else at the same time or if it's already mapped as like into some uh, EBT that, to, uh, already that's not how kvm works if it the whole the whole scheme of kvm's mem slots is that if it's mapped into host user space that's associated with the vm instance it can be mapped into the guest i i, I understand that 
but uh, like they're, they're, they're two different domains. You have rules for how KVM and IOMMU presumably can manage memory and what the transition rules are and how that ties back to the primary MMU. But I don't think you can take anything that you're asserting on generic MM and the rules for anonymous memory versus well-known memory and apply those to a secondary MMU because the entire point of a secondary MMU is to be able to reflect stuff from the primary MMU into something else. So, so again, this is like uh, a separate state machine. It's not uh, relying on the actual... Uh... But what I'm saying is we have that in KVM to enforce KVM rules. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you can go beyond that without making things up. I'm sorry to stop you, Sasha, okay. but... Uh, yeah, uh, 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 I'll... Uh, I'll, 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 I'll yeah, take a look at the... And if you wish, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, extended page table. Uh, I mean, at EBTS uh, rules. Thank you, everyone. And thank you very much. Thank you.